In Russia without love. That's right, Russian spy ships have been spotted off the sites off the coast of Britain as part of a suspected plans to sabotage key energy infrastructure. That's according to broadcasters in Denmark, Sweden, Finland and Norway, who claim that the vessel is looking around wind farms for possible vulnerabilities to exploit in the event of a war with the West. Well, let's get more on this now. I'm delighted to be joined by Simon Diggins, a former army officer. And, and Simon, should we be, uh, should we feel threatened by Russia? Is this a power play now from Vladimir Putin? Um, it's a bit of a power play. It's also, in a sense, business as usual. I mean, certainly during the entire Soviet era, um, the issue of, of the so-called Russian trawlers shadowing a NATO exercises, checking out infrastructure, was normal normal bad behaviour, uh, and and that was that was normal for us. This particular voyage uh, of this particular ship appears to be rather more deliberate. Um, they've been at sea for about a month, I understand, uh, and their passage around both the Baltic Sea uh, through the Skagerrak between uh, Denmark and, and Norway, and then around the North Sea seems very deliberately aimed to understand about potential weaknesses within our infrastructure. So I think it would be reasonable to conclude that they are doing um, so what you might call some significant reconnaissance in depth. Whether that means they intend any immediate harm may be more problematic, but I would suggest it probably means that they, they would have enough information so they did decide to, uh, to damage our infrastructure in some way, no doubt in some kind of deniable way, then they would have that, uh, that, that, that capability. And this does seem to be the way that Russia operates at the moment, to sort of throw out lots of misinformation and uh, claim that they're not doing things that they are doing or claim that they are doing things that they're not doing. Uh, if we see an outage of our own power, if we see an outage of our communication networks across the Atlantic or across the North Sea, how likely is it that that will be Russia trying to sabotage our own networks? I think it would be fair to say is that it would be a possibility that you would have to look at most, most carefully. Um, it wouldn't just be, if you like, a technical failure or a power issue or something like that. Um, we, we know that, and it's still not proven, but it's almost certain that the Russians blew up the, the oil pipeline in, in the Baltic. Um, they had been using cyber attacks uh, against their enemies. Uh, Estonia was, was attacked. Ukraine has certainly been attacked. Uh, and they've, they've tested our infrastructure on a number of occasions. So I'd say this is part of that kind of pattern of, of behaviour. And so if we did suffer a significant power outage, significant communications failure, cyber failure, whatever, then with this information, um, we, could, we could be looking very hard at it and say, were the Russians behind it? So what should we be doing to protect ourselves, to protect our energy infrastructure, to protect our very vital communication networks? How should we be defending ourselves against this Russian threat? I mean, the first thing is much is very general and strategic is do not be naive. Let's have no more naivety about Russia. Putin's Russia uh, is a potential threat nation. Uh, they see us as, as a as people who are standing in their way uh, in terms of his view of how he needs to dominate the world. So the first thing is let's get rid of all the illusions about that. And that's not been properly reflected yet in our defence and security review. There has been updated versions of that. And for example, Ben Wallace has got more money this year uh, than previously been planned. But a proper, a proper new version of the integrated review that really does match the level of threat we're facing is necessary. Uh, and that's across the board, across foreign policy, across diplomacy, across aid and across defence. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to look very hard at all the infrastructure we've got and say, is it properly protected? What resilience do we have in place? Do we have spare cabling? Do we have, have the ability to run one bit without the other? In other words, look at all those things. But they all cost money, and that's the other side of the story from that. If you want to have resilience in the system, you've got to pay for it, and that's expensive. So, again, look hard at our systems, all of those critical infrastructure systems, say, what resilience have we got in place? Do we have the resource to put it in place? And, and be prepared to pay the price, because it, it will be expensive to build in the level of resilience we need. I suppose expensive to build that resilience, but even more expensive to push back or rebuild after an attack yeah. from Russia. Uh, well, Simon uh, Diggins, thank uh, you so much for talking through those issues. I'm afraid we've got to leave it there. There's so much more that can be said on this subject. But that was Simon Diggins, former army officer.